What's up you guys and welcome back to my channel I'm super excited to be doing this video because I've been getting a lot of questions about this So I think it's better if I just do a little video where I just sum everything up for you guys I will be talking about this from my perspective from a Carpenter Finance student a business school student and a corona time student <laughs> Well, I just sent my CV and my essay and it wasn't anything like extraordinary uh, but I did put my heart into it because I really liked this degree so I really did everything that I could to like show that I cared and that I liked it and that's how I got in. And I applied really late as well. I think I applied in April and I got my reply uh, early June. And it's only in June that I found out that I was going to the University of Edinburgh, so it's kind of late. Um, so you don't really have to worry about that. Like I said, my master is the Master of Carbon Finance, now called Climate, uh, what? Oh, Climate Change Finance and Investments. I paid 19k for the year, I think. Something that is particular to my course and changes slightly to all of the courses. My courses were divided in four blocks and each block would have three classes. So I would only do three classes for five weeks. It was good life. <laughs> it seemed easy, but it wasn't that easy. The way the course is structured is that we had the three classes and before each session, the teachers would provide us with videos about the class that we were gonna talk about. The train is passing. So what the teachers would do is that for each week and each session, they would have a theme about their class and they would talk about it and you'd have to watch the videos, do the readings and yeah, show up at the class. So it would be a one hour session where we would talk about the readings and the class and they could answer your questions and just like debate or talk about anything that you had on your mind. So it was really interesting, honestly. My cohort and my course in particular, we're actually not that many students. I think we were between 49 to 60 max not a lot of people moved to edinburgh for uni for the few classes that we attended on campus uh i think we were a group of six people and since all the activities were kind of cancelled because of corona it's not like i could join any group and make any more friends but i think the ones i got were pretty good so i'm not gonna complain i think the cohort was quite nice the teachers Honestly, I love all my teachers so much. They're just really nice. They were always here for you If you had a question if you had any doubts, they're just super present and they're always nice and ready to talk to you So I really like that. They're always um, Ready to send you more information. For example, if you really like a topic They're like, oh, here's another paper you can read or they're just really helpful So I really appreciated that so if I'm not mistaken most of my teachers work on academic papers and they work in the field that is absolutely amazing because they have real live uh, experience from the field so their knowledge doesn't really expire so it's really interesting to see that and learn from people from the field that can tell you exactly what's happening and what to expect once you're gonna put yourself out there for the job and to understand what the challenges are and what changes we need to create to better the world and what things to be aware of it is really interesting and enriching so i do love our teachers so much so one thing that i want to mention as well i don't know if it's master related or uh, uk related but something that's quite interesting is that you do a lot of research so basically i had for each course uh, two essays I think to do and each essay we would have to do a lot of research for it and we would have to back it up with academic papers and that was very new to me it's kind of challenging but quite interesting because you learn so much more my essays were also quite short so that's really good I think they're up to a thousand five hundred words max but yeah it was really interesting and really enriching I think the only thing that I didn't like about research papers is the fact that sometimes your teacher would mention something in the class so you know it's accurate and it's true but then you have a hard time finding a paper that that you could use to back your claims. And that's not because your teacher lied or forgot or something, it's just sometimes the fields don't have enough research and it's hard to find certain papers and then you have, you of course, your Google bubble and stuff like that that limits your paper findings and stuff. So yeah, that wasn't fun. I'm gonna say the workload is okay. I don't think it's extremely hard, but I don't think it's easy either. And I think, I don't know if it's a UK system thing or a master thing, I think this is gonna be my quote of the day, but I do think as a master's student, you do need to understand that there's going to be a certain level of difficulty and challenge that you're going to be faced with. And I do think my course in particular met both <laughs> of these things. Uh, so it was quite interesting and it was 
pretty decent. You weren't burnt out, uh, but you weren't bored either. You couldn't be bored. <laughs> There's so much to do. I think the only thing that was really difficult for me workload-wise were the readings because the readings can be up to 60 pages long and although your teachers don't expect you to read everything I have a hard time just keeping through and understanding what the paper was about and I tend to want to read everything otherwise I just don't understand it so that was really hard for me to keep up with and from the beginning I wasn't keeping up with my readings and honestly <laughs> if you do my course and you end up with Luca <laughs> Do your readings, otherwise you're gonna go to the live sessions and you're not gonna understand anything. Absolutely nothing. I think other classes are a little bit easier to understand, even though you didn't do the reading, but his in particular is just really hard, but yeah. And then the workload issue came in April. Uh, so we had a consulting project with the African Development Bank, which is also a great thing about my course. I really like the fact that we can work with actual companies and organizations in the field and have like live experience of what it's like to do consulting. Yes to my course, but at the same time it was really challenging because it was like the last month that we had to do the paper. And on top of that, we had another class that had a group project with other people. And yeah, everyone had different priorities. Not everyone was prioritizing the same level of work. so. It creates a lot of tension and conflicts in both the groups. At that point, really, I knew I couldn't keep up with the reading, but at that point, I really gave up on almost everything. And I will never attend the last week of video classes because all the deadlines are doing it's just so hard to attend classes when you really didn't do the readings, when you didn't do anything. So I think the month of March was horrible, but the month of April was also pretty bad. It's the time where we had, I think, nine deadlines. But nine deadlines includes doing some presentations and stuff like that, so I included everything. It's kind of nine deadlines from the 30th of March till the 16th of April. That is a lot of things to do. The month of April was really exhausting because after doing such big projects, you kind of just want to be done with everything and relax. And knowing that you still have so many deadlines, it's just draining. But I think the month of March and April are difficult for all students in almost all courses. At least for my housemates, the dead psychology, and humanities? I'm sorry, Carol, I don't recall. It's bad, but it's not that bad. <laughs> but it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Now that we've talked about the workload and assignments, let's talk about the grading system. So the UK grading system, and I guess the fact that it's Edinburgh University, you can pursue your stuff like that, is quite different from where you might be coming from if you didn't study in the UK system. So the grades are out of 100 and if you have anything above 70 it is actually really, 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 really good. If you have anything between 60 to 69, you're really good. So you don't have to worry about failing or anything, you're good. And if you have anything between 50 to 59, I think it's okay, but it's not great. And if you have anything below, just um, just try to be in the 50s to 60s, that's all I have to say. <laughs> but yeah, don't be sad if you're not uh, reaching 90, 90. Like, I think no one reaches 90. Overall, I really loved my course and I think it was really amazing, super enriching, super broad, so it allows me to go to different fields. I could focus solely on finance, I could focus solely on accounting or carbon accounting, I can focus solely on policy, and it's just super enriching and I just really loved it, so yeah. Uh, the reason why I also was really excited to go to the University of Edinburgh is because I wanted to have a campus experience and see what it's like to go to school with like thousands and thousands of students. Because of... Ugh, I'm so sad. So, because of Corona, I didn't have the campus experience that I was looking for uh, coming to Edinburgh. I didn't have a lot of in-person sessions, so I didn't get to experience a lot of the campus life. I didn't get to visit a lot of buildings, and I never went into any of the libraries. But don't worry, there are many libraries, and some of them actually have a really nice view to the city slash Hollywood Park, so Arthur's seat. And yeah, it's just really nice from what I see on other people's Instagrams of the library. I have been to a few of the buildings and I've been to the business school ones and they're actually pretty nice. Uh, I do think that they're, I don't know, I find them small in a way because there's some lounge areas where you can hang out and have like a snack bar and stuff like that. And there were a few students during exam seasons and knowing that it's not at full capacity because of Corona and there's probably only like one third of the people that actually came to campus the fact that that was always full during exam seasons, I can only imagine what the campus must look like during normal times. It must be fun and lively, but I'm so not used to crowds anymore that I don't really like it, but I would have definitely liked to experience the whole campus. You'll probably get lost <laughs> at the beginning trying to find your classes, but you'll get used to it at some point. But one thing that I wanted to mention about the university buildings is that the University of Edinburgh actually has 
a gym or two gyms yes i think they have two gym um locations they're pretty big pretty spacious i think there's even a pool and then there's even sessions like the teachers and stuff like that so you do class stuff uh, i never been to the gym either so but they're 15 pounds per month and i think it's a great deal and the school also provides so many other clubs and activities that you can do such a good opportunity to, to make the most out of it and to be what's it called healthy yeah and to be healthy Most of the questions I get are actually about accommodation and people ask me if they either should go to a student accommodation or a private accommodation and the reason why I chose a student accommodation is firstly it's just so much easier to handle, so much easier to deal with because I don't have time to start thinking about private accommodations, breaking leases if I need to go away and like I don't know, sometimes landlords can be annoying and it just don't like having to deal with these things. Uh, so another reason why I chose the accommodation was because I wanted to be able to access people <laughs> and socialize much more easily than I would if I was living in a private accommodation. It is such an easy and lazy way to network, so why not, you know? You're a master student, you have other things to think about. However, if you're someone who wants to like live in a city center or live in a very specific spot, if you're looking for a specific experience, if you have pets and if you have kids, maybe a private accommodation is clearly a better option and probably your only option. The reason I would have picked a private accommodation over a student accommodation would only be because of the washing machines. The thing I hate most about student accommodations is the laundry rooms because sometimes machines are fully used and you have to wait and it's just so annoying to have to think about other people and schedules and stuff like that. When I want to wash my clothes, I just want to wash them and not think about other things. Plus you pay. No. Mm, no. And one thing I hate about private accommodations is the fact that I'm, if I do take a shared house, I might not be able to have a private bathroom. And that's a big no. I have shared my bathroom before and I'm not doing that again. I will also be linking some private accommodation websites down below and you can always go looking for an agency if you don't feel comfortable dealing with landlords directly. So another question that I get is which accommodations do I recommend? Uh, because I'm a postgraduate student and I only came to Edinburgh for my master's, the only accommodation that I experience and can really talk about is New Park. And then the other accommodation that I went to is Oshia. I did put it in my options for the accommodations, but I didn't like the aesthetics too much. And they had shared bathrooms, although I know you can have it in suits. Um, yeah, I wasn't a fan of it, that's, that's all. So now let's talk about my accommodation and I'll tell you all the deets about it. By the way, New Park is no longer linked to University of Edinburgh. So if you want to book in New Park, you actually have to go to their website or go to another platform like Ember Students, which I'll get to in a bit. But you have to book separately and not on their platform when you're registering for a University of Edinburgh accommodation. But yeah, so one thing in particular about New Park, it's near Easter Road and it's 30 minute walk away from school. Personally, it is not as far as it sounds, kind of, but <laughs> I really like to walk and I really like looking at the city because I don't go out that often. So it was just really nice to go for a walk and go to school. Then again, I mostly went to class when it wasn't raining, so that's one point. But the accommodation is actually near to a bus stop. It's literally in front of the road that you cross. And there are so many buses from the city that actually stop there so you don't even have to worry about not being able to reach there most buses pass through Easter Road so you'll be able to get home with no problem and overall the city is quite well um, connected so there's trams, then there's the Waverly Station and the buses that I just mentioned so if you're thinking of commuting into the city and to school you actually don't have to worry about that at all I actually loved New Park, I really enjoyed the accommodation as a whole, I found it really aesthetically pleasing. That's one solid point for me that it's pretty. I love the kitchen because it was seemed very social and easy to share with other people. I really like the fact that I had an end suit and I already mentioned this in my previous video about moving into the apartment. Apartment. Well, the accommodation that I really, really, really liked the fact that it was bigger than I thought. And I'm sure now that I said it, people are like, oh, I thought it was going to be huge. So if you're interested in my room in particular, it's the B21. Uh, it wasn't a lot of sunlight, so I would recommend getting either uh, the rooms from the other side of the road. Get one, two, and three that are probably facing south. My accommodation was a six-people house, 
and at the end because of lockdown we're kind of four one thing that i also really liked was the staff the staff is so nice all of them like literally all of them were so sweet so nice just so easy going so easy to talk to they're always so helpful and one thing that i really like about the accommodation is that they actually decorated uh, for themes so basically they decorated for christmas halloween uh, chinese new years easter valentine's day and um, they always have decorations, they always have games, so you can always win something, even if it's just like a chocolate or something. But it's just really nice, it's kind of, they try to create this sense of community and the sense of belonging and just made it so pleasant to live there. So the stuff is amazing, so shout out to them. One thing that I really liked about the accommodation was that every three weeks, I think, someone would actually come to our house and they would clean the common area, which is the kitchen. It was just nice that you knew that someone would actually also help and would contribute to maintaining um, a clean space for everyone. What I didn't like about the accommodation. So the Wi-Fi, which is provided by Glide, um, it's not bad. Honestly, it's not bad. However, I like to stream Disney Plus, and for those who have streamed Disney Plus, it is quite Wi-Fi intensive. So it does take a lot of Wi-Fi. I don't know. It just slows it down, and the Wi-Fi provider wasn't able to keep up with that, and it wasn't able to keep up with my streamed anime either. So. Um, I wasn't very happy, but overall, I think course-wise, everything was working fine for uni, okay? The other thing I didn't like was the noise. It's not very well isolated, so you can hear a lot of things from the outside. If you have your window open, it feels like it's inside, kind of. It's just really loud. If someone in the corridor of the other room comes out and speaks to someone in the corridor, you can hear everything. It's just super loud because there's echo and it's just super annoying and you can hear not you can't hear that much of your housemates i used to hear my housemate on the phone but i couldn't hear everything but i could hear kind of everything <laughs> um so yeah i think sound isolation is really bad and it's like during rona so there's not a lot of people so i think outside of rona it's probably annoying i think there's nothing else like that those are the only down points about the house and maybe for some people these are huge problems but for me it was not that bad but eh, kind of anyways yeah and since you probably still don't know which accommodations to book, <laughs> I would also recommend you checking out Amber Students, which is why I'm really happy to announce that we are partnering up for this section of the video. So it's a platform for which students can book accommodations near the universities. So it is one of the largest Southeast Asian accommodation providers with thousands of listings in actually a lot of different countries. You can book with them if you're going to the US, to France, Spain, Germany, Australia, and there's so many more, so <laughs> I'm not gonna list them all. And how you can do it is just look up their website, you can search the country that you're going for, you can look at, uh, for example, different filters, so price high to low, flexibility, and suit studios, and stuff like that. So you can also choose to share your apartment. They provide around the clock free and personalized assistance for each of the steps. So one thing that I also like is that they have a COVID policy which allows you to cancel your booking if you don't get your visa, which honestly during times of COVID is just such a headache and it's better to be safe than sorry. And I know how hard it can be and stressful about booking and stuff like that. So it's honestly a really nice option to have at hand. And you also get some promotions and freebies because you're booking with them and they also have partners with other companies and they try to offer you really good stuff. So that's really awesome. Anyways, getting back into the topic of the video, uh, cost of living. I did mention this in another video about moving to the UK, but generally this is what living in Edinburgh uh, costs for me in particular. To finish off this video, I really just want to talk really quickly about the city of Edinburgh. I absolutely fell in love with it. It's just beautiful. It's just so close to everything. It's like, I don't know. I do think it's really enjoyable. The views are great. I think just generally there's so many things to do, so many things to see. If you like the outdoors or if you just want some fresh air, you don't even have to go that far from the city and it's right there. And I think there's so many beautiful things to discover around the city. I'm only talking about the green stuff because I love walking. So for me, walking and exploring and seeing those beautiful areas hidden away that are just so beautiful. And the fact that Edinburgh is actually near the beach, not that I would go swimming in the cold ass water of the UK. Uh, it's just nice to know that you have a beach and you kind of have like that beach vibe, yet city vibe, yet camping vibe. It's just so crazy. It's just such an amazing city to live in and experience, I guess, if you're really want to have a break from the crazy city life well i was experiencing it in covid but still it was just beautiful amazing i am clearly in love with it <laughs> i really hope this helped answer some of your questions to clarify some things about the university and if you have some questions comment down below you can always dm me on instagram and i will see you for my next video this is probably my last edinburgh video but yeah oh.
Awesome. Up and down.